And it wasn't until I met my son for the first time when he, he was born. And immediately after, I was, I was enraptured with the idea of losing weight. It became very important because I didn't want to not be with him forever, you know, for as long as I could. And so one of the things I want to talk about is sort of the motivation for losing weight. And if you don't have motivation, there's really very little reason to try. If, if, you're, if you're not interested in losing weight, it's very easy to say, I don't need to do this. Okay. I'm sorry, we got started a little bit late. Almost there, everybody. Is that your business, the Mastery Nutrition? Uh, I, no. I, I, this is strictly, I'm, I don't run a consultation for nutrition or anything. I'm happy to share. Uh, well, I wouldn't say you had it all the time, but I was just curious because you said the Mastery that's just a folder that I keep my stuff that has to do with uh, my nutrition ideas with. Okay. You have a yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I don't. Um, but this will be on lamazny.com. So everything that you see will be available at mylastname.com. Okay? As a matter of fact, it's there right now. You'll see today's talk and tomorrow's talk advertised there, and right beneath it is this presentation. Okay? <coughs> So what we're going to talk about today is before and after, because everybody is really interested to see what I look like before, and I'm, I'm always a little embarrassed. But uh, and then after, and the after that I that I had as my original goal, which was about 190 pounds, which is like what uh, nutrition standards say that I should be, was a little bit low for me. I looked a little gaunt, and some might say that I, you know, I, I look a little gaunt now. I, I personally feel like I'm a little plump compared to what I was, and you'll see. We're gonna talk about how many calories it takes in order to lose and how many calories it takes to maintain. We're gonna talk about uh, reading and staying informed using technology, researching nutrition using technology, determining your proper weight, uh, having great scales and how technology can help you to do that. Uh, learning how to cook was one of the key things to what I felt uh, I needed to do in order to lose and maintain my weight. Uh, journaling and sharing, recording your progress, finding support and guidance, which is so easy today with Web 2.0 technologies. Defending your rights, which is something that became very surprising for me, how important it was to defend my rights to gain my uh, sense of nutrition. Companies don't care whether or not you lose weight. You need to care whether or not you lose weight, and you need to defend your ability to do that. Part of the way that we are encroached upon by companies is by them offering high-fat foods that are delicious without any real sense of how that deliciousness translates into calories. We'll talk about that. Exercise if you want to. One of my main uh, concerns when I first got involved with losing weight was that I was going to have to exercise. I hate exercise. I really don't like to exercise. I still don't like to exercise. I do it occasionally. But the only reason I do it is because I, I like the way that I feel afterwards. I typically don't like 
going through the rigmarole of, of exercise. What you should know is that exercise is about feeling good. It's not about losing weight. For, for me, it wasn't me. And learning about the alternatives. We're going to talk about what happens if you decide that um, you want to stay this size. So this is what I looked like before. Yeah, I was a big guy. Which, which one? I was all. This was probably when I was the heaviest. This was about 360 pounds. And so you can see I'm smiling. I was happy. How much do you weigh now? I weigh about 195. So this is what I look like now. This is when I reached my goal. This is, was on my way. This is a recent photo. That's a recent photo. So this was about 190, maybe 185. Yes. Oh, no. Um, how do I feel? I feel fantastic. I feel so much better about living every day. And the things that surprised me were the things that I didn't know that I missed, like the ability to run, you know, or the ability to, to run upstairs or, or walk around or walk a half a mile or walk three miles. The things that I wasn't able to do, I didn't know I wasn't able to do until I was able to do them. I remember very distinctly the first night I was able to run more than a couple of steps. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I just didn't do it. It wasn't part of my physical ability. And being able to do that was so liberating. It didn't make me into a runner. But I just, I remember that as a great success for me. How many calories? Don't worry about it. <laughs> How many calories in that pile of pretzels? I said, don't read that. <laughs> These are all examples of 200 calories. Okay, so we'll eat this much of a donut, or this pile of pretzels, or that half a bagel, or those three eggs. That's actually probably more than 200. Uh, or that half of a flame hamburger. That's 200 calories. And so. I'm sorry, is that wine? No, that's oil. That is vegetable oil. <laughs> uh, wine, though, we're, we're actually going to talk a little bit about alcohol because I, I recently found out that I really love craft beer. And craft beer tends to be really high in calories because it's really high in alcohol, usually 9% ABV. And um, that's one of those things that when we, when we consume anything, we have to keep in mind that there are calories associated with it. And as long as you're tracking it, you can eat cupcakes all day. I don't care. You can eat whatever you want. If you want to maintain or lose weight, the only thing that you have to be concerned about is keeping your number below a certain number. And we're going to talk today about determining that number. I'm just curious, you don't have to remember, is that what 200 looks like? Well, you yeah, no, this is 200 out. calories, this is 200 calories, that's 200 calories. So you calories. Cut, cut a piece out of that. That's what yeah, you wouldn't cut a piece out of that, but it's, it's the, the idea that if you eat this much of this, or this much of this, or this much of this, Two, four, six. Uh, you know, and so if you ate all of this, it would add up to a certain number of calories. It's not celery in the upper left corner. Is it? it sure is. It's a big pile of celery. And because celery is mostly that water. Should be lower than two hundred. That pile. Oh, but it's a big. It's pile. a big. It, it doesn't even <laughs> fit in the fridge. Show you the whole thing. Especially get that pile of water. You, you don't have to eat the glass. The glass has zero calories. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah, the idea. It's just a way of visualizing. Is that butter or water? Probably butter. butter. But they're almost equal in calories. I mean, they're neither better nor worse. So let's, let's ask you some uh, questions, because this is, this is what I learned. This is the way that I lost weight. I know you from somewhere. Yeah. Um, what, how many calories in an average apple? Well, that's a trick question. Because what is average? Oh, okay. You understand my point? Um, we're going to start to talk about this. This is a IKEA kitchen scale, and it wasn't until I got this that I really got um, very dedicated to the craft of determining calories. 
How many calories in one cup of average chicken noodle soup? It's about 100 calories. A 12 ounce can, a 12 ounce can of soda? Zero. Zero. <laughs> no. Not even close. Diet soda. Diet soda is about one calorie for a can. How about a regular can of soda? 120. 120, that's right. 120. It's 60 calories per serving. There are two servings in a can of soda. Ah. Eight dessert, right. Ha ah. ha. A 12 ounce bottle of beer. Average beer. 150. 180 is, is for a little bit higher alcohol content, like 6% or so. Yes? I'd like to bring up a point. I think you're wrong about the 120. It's 120 per serving. No, it's 60 per serving. 120 per can. Does anybody have a can of soap? Well, maybe you have a 24-ounce. No, it's 12-ounce can of Pepsi. 12-ounce can of Pepsi is 120 calories. I'm correct. But trust me. Um, how about one McDonald's hamburger? A regular hamburger. A hamburger, no cheese. No cheese, that's right. 260. Uh, Subway turkey, six inch. 450, that's right. Yeah. It's just about 450. It depends on if you have cheese on it or mayonnaise or whatever. But it, they make it very, they've made it part of their brand. And it's one of the reasons I end up there all the time is because I know exactly what I'm eating basically when I go to a Subway. I also know exactly what I'm eating when I go to a McDonald's. I don't know what's in the food, but I know what I'm eating kept calorically. Um, a cup of chili is 220 calories. Uh, a slice of hearth artisan bread, really great, crunchy, delicious bread. That, that'll probably cost you about 140 calories. A teaspoon of mustard. I'm oh, sorry? How about the 100 calorie pack of food? How many calories in it? Yeah, how many calories in it? <laughs> 100 calories. And that is a brilliant way for those marketers to make a huge markup yeah. on, on packaging. Because to me, I want to know how many calories I'm eating. I know that that's 1 20th of what I'm going to eat today. A 100 calorie pack of anything. My wife's big on that. She brings these home like that. Absolutely. 100 calorie snacks. The, the problem is, if you think that 100 calorie packs means that you can eat four of them, it does, as long as you count that as 400 calories out of your day. If you're not counting, it doesn't matter how many calorie, 100 calorie packs you have of whatever. It, it just matters that you're paying attention to that. This Richard Simmons deal of meal type thing, you know, where you not even close. Take yourself I mean, off one side and put it on the other when you finish with all the calories and you stop eating the meal. I'm, I basically do that manually. Let me show you what I do. This is extracted from a list, and that's the, uh, I'd like to find a good list showing complete calories in a whole bunch of stuff. Just happen to have it. It's electronic list, really. Absolutely. We're going to talk about it. Good. But this is the last like six or eight months of my life in food. Okay, everything that goes in my mouth, I write down. If you think this is fanatical, you, you've not lost 100 pounds. You know, it's like once, once you find out the freedom of that, you're willing to control. That, that's a lot of work writing it down. That's, that's a big problem writing it down. I, I lose weight if I write it down. You will lose weight if you write it down. Yeah. I can plot it out over four months. Absolutely. I'll write it right down. Absolutely. But I have to write it down. You don't have to, but it, it was the only thing that worked for me, and it's me the way too. that I maintain right. now. If I could do it mentally, you know, I could say, I'm going to eat 2,000 calories today. Let me see. I had an uh, egg white omelet this morning with toast. That's like, you know, 30 plus 200. I had a uh, quarter of a Belgian waffle. That's why, like. Why don't you use a computer? So I do. You have the same breakfast. You just I do. It. That's kind of when I first. When I first did it, I actually used some sites that I'm going to show you. And I promise we're going to get to all this. But I just, you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves because I'm introducing these things sort of ahead. So let's uh, get back on track. There you go. Right here. Time for lunch. Yeah. It's telling me that I'm supposed to be here. That's kind of funny. Um, I told you I really like craft beer. Victory Hop Wallop is a very hoppy, delicious, amazingly delicious uh, India Pale Ale. It is 7.7% .7 ABV. It's about 220 calories for a 12 ounce bottle. It's delicious, but uh, you have to count it. You have to pay attention to these things, and you have to become aware of them, or else there's really no sense in trying to lose weight. If you're just eating and you're saying, oh, that looks like it's you know reasonable, 
Reasonable doesn't mean anything. Reasonable is average. <laughs> average doesn't mean anything. You have to have some measure. And we're going to talk about measures too. Casual is about 200 calories. Now, a Bertucci's margarita style pizza, let's say two slices, and they're a sixth slice. How many calories in a margarita style, two slices at Bertucci's? Anybody ever been to Bertucci's? Oh, uh, great, yeah. Like, they're fantastic, they're delicious. They do not publish their caloric information. I don't know how much oil they're putting on it, I don't know how much cheese they're putting on it, I don't know if they have a standard, I don't know what's in their, uh, I probably could find out what's in their, what their ingredients are. But I have to guess whenever I go to Bertucci's what the calories are, and that drives me nuts. <laughs> drives me crazy, because I have to guess. Guessing is not good if you're trying to maintain or lose weight. You have to know. And for a while, I just didn't eat pizza. <laughs> I eat pizza now. But um, I, I tend to go towards things that are frozen, because if I have a frozen pizza, I usually know what the calories are. Yeah, there's a nutritional facts thing, yeah, right? So, I just want you to start to think about these things because I want you to realize that for me, that was one of the things that changed everything. When I started to realize how many calories were in food, particular pieces of food, yes. There's a question. Uh, you may not know what Bertucci's is, but you might know what some other Papa John's is. Or Absolutely. Like Papa John's makes the nutritional and, and then that Wouldn't it be, you know, you don't have to get hysterical. I mean, if, if Papa John's X I got this, sir. Kind of <laughs> because they're completely yeah. different pizzas with completely different ingredients. Yeah, but how much different it could be? It could be hundreds of calories. Really? Absolutely. Like that. Because if, if, if Bertucci's does their artisan thing and takes their big old bottle of extra virgin olive oil and goes, it'll be delicious. <laughs> it'll be fantastic. Oh, man, it's so good. But. Anybody want to guess at how many calories in a tablespoon of oil? Close. It is 120 calories. How many um, servings? How many one tablespoon servings in here? A lot. There's, there's about 6,400 calories in this bottle. So don't drink it all. Don't drink it all. Take it easy with the oil. Have a beer instead. Have a beer instead. Alcohol is a tricky thing too, isn't it? Alcohol is a very tricky thing. As a matter of fact, alcohol has almost as much calorie per gram as fat. Sure. We'll, we'll talk about it later. So another thing I did was I read a lot. I started off with a um, free ebook called The Hacker's Diet, which um, I was drawn to, to, to because I'm, I'm a technologist, and so I tend to listen to other technologists. This guy happened to lose a lot of weight. He also had, part, as part of his philosophy, that exercise was not essential, but rather he started giving me some of the ideas that, that I really held on to. And I found other stuff. Um, I started to read things like Eric Schlosser's uh, Fast Food Nation, which was a big <coughs> eye-opener and made me realize that McDonald's doesn't care if I can't walk. McDonald's only cares if I want hamburgers. Um, they are putting their caloric information out there because they're being forced to, generally speaking. And other companies are too. You know, a, when you walk into a New York restaurant, a chain restaurant, you will start to see on their menu the calories listed right next to the food. That is fantastic. For me, that is a great success. When I hear that somebody some restaurant lawyer is coming and arguing that they don't want to put their calories up on the board because it might influence somebody not to buy something, it really makes me very angry. Because to me, it should be my right to be able to know what I'm putting into my mouth. Subway does it. Subway does it, sure. A, a lot of companies actually make it available. So, but now they're going to start making it available right on the menu as you're ordering, as opposed to on the back of your Place that, right? So these are some of my favorites. What to Eat by Marion Nestle uh, actually talks about how supermarkets are designed to make you buy food that is not really that great for you. If you just stay to the outer perimeter of a supermarket, for example, and just go down the produce aisle and down the dairy aisle and down the butcher aisle and then over to the whole foods aisle 
and run out to the register, you'll start losing weight probably. But we don't. We go up and down the aisles and we pick up, you know, all kinds of things that are not necessarily the best for us. Fantastic book. Philosophically uh, had a big influence on me. Eat This Not That actually did caloric studies on many foods that do not have caloric information available. And although I have not actually gotten that book, I've, I've picked it up several times. I'm definitely going to uh, pick it up. And it, it talks about, you know, on this menu, well, like let's say Bertucci's, it says, definitely get the margarita pizza, because we did a study and we, we did the caloric uh, count on it, and it's this many calories per slice. Don't get this because it's like 4,000 calories per serving, you know? Eat, drink, and be healthy, uh, more or less, takes apart the food pyramid and uh, says that it's, it, it is, the food pyramid is essentially based on the USDA wanting to sell a lot of grain. <laughs> and uh, when you look at that pyramid, it's more about the American sort of agricultural industry than your health. And so he really takes that apart and says, yes, eat a lot of grains, but make sure they're whole grains. Yes, eat a lot of dairy, but make sure that it's low fat. Yes, you know. Um, pay attention to what they're saying, generally speaking, about the pyramid, but be scrutinous in the way that you apply that to your own nutrition. What about books on the Mediterranean diet? I really don't know anything about it. We got a book there from the Slow Food Movement down lower. The whole food is up. That's on the right, that's lower right food. That, that's the slow, there's a movement, the whole food and slow food. These people that want you to eat. Uh, Restaurant food, eat it slowly and enjoy it. And eat plenty of cheese. Well, that, that's good advice. I mean, if you if you're scarfing something down, you're not enjoying it. You're you're probably going to want to continue to eat that way. If if we're not enjoying food, why are we There's consuming? The foundation that spins that. Yeah. They spin that, and that's the book. That's one of their books. Yeah, I I like Michael Pollan quite a bit. I think he's got some good things to say. Um, at any rate, okay. there are a lot of fantastic books out there, and. The Hacker's Diet, as I said, this presentation is available on lamasday.com right now. And so if you go uh, to this slide, you'll be able to actually start to read The Hacker's Diet, which for completely for free, which I thought was an amazing, amazing book. Um, one thing that I had up on screen that I did not talk about was biometrics. Biometrics essentially says that If you want to be satisfied, one of the ways that you can be satisfied is you can start to add low calorie, low calorie foods like vegetables to basically every dish. And because those vegetables often take on the great flavors of a smaller portion of a really rich food in your dishes, you'll be able to enjoy it more. I was not a big fan of vegetables before I went on this journey. And due to books like this and through reading a lot of other things, I realized how important it was for me to be able to have some control over what I was eating, start to cook. I was not a big cook before. Um, but through reading things like that, I started to realize that I wanted to gain some control over what I was eating. And so I started to eat at home a lot more. This was an interesting little thing. Uh, why don't the French get as fat as Americans? Americans eat till the TV show is over. And I just thought it was a really sort of interesting way of looking at how we in this society and culture are so media driven and sort of sitting in front of TVs and computers all the time. And it's really affecting the way that we are eating because we want to sort of have this kind of entertainment visually and this kind of entertainment uh, as far as taste and this kind of entertainment as far as you know, the way that we feel. And so we throw all that together and we're really comfortable. In the meantime, we're, we're gaining weight at a, at a horrible rate. The answer to that is easy. Don't the French double up on sex? Uh, sure. But as I said, exercise is about feeling good. It's not necessarily about what you eat. Did you come across, uh, I saw a TV program on Channel 12 about 10 days ago mm -hmm. about the cattle corn. And they produced that at a loss. And they only produce it because the government subsidizes it heavily. I haven't heard of that. And, but then on top of it, they have to stop feeding the cattle corn to cattle mash the cattle because it gives them all sorts of physical problems and they have to kill them earlier. 
Well, but this is one of those things, that I, I mean, most of those books that I was talking about, like Fast Food Nation, talks about horrible things that are going on in the feedlots. Yeah. Well, what concerns me is the program also suggested that the, the corn oil that they use to sweeten foods uh -huh. is a one of the pretty good underlying factor in diabetes, too, subsidized by the government. Sure. I'm still checking. I don't know what that is, but well, I'm going to follow it through. I, I've, I've tended to simplify the way that I think philosophically about food to basically calories first, nutrition second, and, and emotions third. You know, it's like if, if we're talking about oil, for example, uh, I'm saying keep it to a minimum because of the calories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also because nutritionally you need oil, you need fats in order to, you know, uh, have your joints, for example, and your skin to be supple. Uh, but I also, philosophically, I want to try and stay as natural as possible. So, for example, I really prefer beef that comes from a grazing lot as opposed to a feedlot, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of philosophy that I came across, but I was not interested in any of that when I was trying to lose weight. I was just interested in the lowest amount of calories possible uh, so that I could have a lot of great food but be able to control it for a So. I'm showing you this because I want to emphasize that this is really the only number I pay attention to, generally speaking. The rest of these numbers are very important for many people. You know, if you have uh, diabetes, for example, you're going to want to pay attention to some of these other numbers. But for me, I didn't care how much fat was in something. I cared about how many calories were in something. So when somebody says to me, you know, don't eat carbs, I would sort of laugh to myself. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, if, if you want carbohydrates, eat carbohydrates. If you get some extra fiber in that, fine. I, I did not care about nutrition for a very long time while I was trying to lose. I only cared about calories. And I would say that that was part of the reason why I found some success was I wasn't necessarily too interested in most of these other numbers that occur in this book. I was only interested about the one column of calories. What is BMI? Body mass, mass index. What is it? That's right. And essentially, if you know your your um, weight, your height, your age, your gender, etc., there's a number that says that you're healthy, relatively speaking. You have a healthy weight if you're within this range. Let's take a look at that. Is that the thing where they submerge your water? I've never been submerged in water. Um, so if I say, you know, I was 350 pounds, I was six foot two inches. Forty-four. So if we see, for example, BMI of 30 or greater. I was well beyond obese when I was 350 pounds at my height, right? And I knew that if I wanted to be healthy, I wanted to go to 185 or so, which, believe it or not, is really just within the normal range. I'm actually at 190, whoop, 195 considered overweight. Right? I'm 25. But I don't think I'm actually overweight. I'm, I have a pretty big frame, and so there's some flexibility there. Um, and so that starts a conversation that we were, where that's really just getting an idea of where you should be. I, when I actually achieved that 185 goal, just to get inside the normal weight category, I was gone. I was really, I was pretty low. And I didn't have any energy. I was I was in a bad way. So you may find after you lose the intended amount of weight that you want according to BMI that that's right on, or it's just a little bit low, or whatever. BMR, your basal metabolic rate, is the number of calories that you can consume in a day, and without any extra activity, basically consume those calories. Just existing, laying on a bed, 
you, you consume a number of calories. Uh, if you laid in the bed for 24 hours, you would consume a certain number of calories. For me, that number is about 2,000. And again, there's a calculator here. Many calculators do this. But again, if I say I'm a male and I'm six foot two. Do There are many different formulas. I'm not sure which one this particular one is using, but you can actually do this by yourself. There's a whole bunch of different ways. As a matter of fact, the way that I usually use is you multiply your existing weight by 10, and that gives you a good idea of where your BMR is right now. So if I was 350 pounds, I know that I could eat about 3,500 calories today and not gain weight and not lose weight, but rather maintain, which is fantastic, right? If you're 350 pounds, it means you actually have to work. You have to eat 3,500 calories today in order to maintain that weight. So for me, when I was 350 pounds, eating 2,000 calories in a day was still a very comfortable way to eat, but I was still losing weight. I was actually losing weight very quickly. And so, um, we'll say 250, so 34. So this says that if I'm 250 pounds at six foot two, that I should be able to eat about 2,328. If you exercise, that number will go up. If you don't exercise, that number stays still, right? So these are the ways that you start to determine what you should weigh, how many calories it takes to, to either go up or down if, according to your own body. And there's lots of ways to learn about calories. Essentially, calorie, a calorie is a way of measuring energy. And you know, we think about it as this number on the back of packages, but it's really a way of measuring how much energy it takes to do something. <coughs> oh, when we talked about alcohol, seven calories per gram, protein has four calories per gram, carbohydrates have four calories per gram, and fat has nine calories per gram. So, if I have something that has, let's say it's an ounce, uh, which is how many grams? It's 28. 28 grams of an ounce. So if you um, have, let's say, let's say it's 100% fat, 9 times 28 is what? Whatever that number is. That would be how much that particular object would be. Let's say there was a slab of butter. It was one ounce of butter. We, can, we know just by making that math happen there, nine calories per gram times 28 grams equals however many calories. As opposed to if it was a solid block of protein or a, uh, an ounce of alcohol, like a shot, right? A uh, shot is 1.5 ounces. You can get an idea of how many calories there are in that. It's usually easier just to pick up that book and find out how many. But I'm saying though, if you have a lot of fat in something, as long as you know how many calories it is, you just count that against your uh, BMR for the day. But know that when you're eating something that's high in fat, it's usually easier to get a lot of calories in that. So that quick uh, photo slide was just to remind us that the way that we see ourselves in the mirror is not necessarily the way that we are. We, we definitely have an image in our mind of what size we are. And we often get cues from things like magazines, television, about uh, what it is that we should be as far as weight and how we should look, right? So, but uh, we were talking about formulas for BMR, right? This is a formula that I came across a, at healthnewyorktimes.com that says that according to this um, formula, my proper weight would be more like 209. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm actually under my proper weight. And I thought this was a pretty good thing. If I, if I weighed 10 more pounds, I don't think I'd be unhealthy. It would be more weight than I'd want to carry. So I'm very happy with where I am right now. But there are a lot of different formulas to determine. Yes? Can you determine a large gram and a small gram? Uh, they... You can do it for a single gram. Right. If you do, if you can... Uh, reach around with your thumb and forefinger and touch, then you have a medium frame. If it overlaps, it's a small frame. If it, if it can't touch, it's a large frame. 
that's you know there are probably ways that you can do it. You can get like that submerged in water thing. Talk about measurement. You have to have some good scales. You have to have a great body scale. One that when you step on it and step off and step on again, it tells you the same number two times in a row. There are scales out there that are really cheap. You can buy one at Ikea that I would not recommend for anybody. That every time you step on it, you get a different number. Um, you should, it should be a reliable body scale. And for me, it was hard to find a scale that weighed over, weighed over 310 pounds. You know, when I stepped on it, it would stop at 310 and I was well over 310. So it wasn't, a, I remember that day too, that I was able to use my scale. Um, it was kind of depressing, actually. Not <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> so get yourself a really good scale because you're going to be using it. I use my scale every day. I write it down as part of my record. I can tell you on December 6th, I was 196 pounds. Um, let's see. On the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, I was 90, 196 pounds. So I have here a record that basically goes back as far as I can remember. That tells exactly what I ate, what my weight was as a result. I write down when I exercise. I write down basically everything. You put the calories on the food? food on. I do, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I have a running tab that says I ate you know, two slices of toast at 40 calories a piece. That's 80 calories in a second. Two times 40 equals 80, and then add that to my total. How much of a deficit were you trying to run I was, I was pretty aggressive. You'll see, I'll, I'll bring up my, my scale, my uh, chart. But I, I was probably dropping about 200 to 300 calories a day. So at my lowest, I was around 1,400 calories. I mean, when I got all the I'm sorry? That's not even a pound a week. I was, I was losing quite a bit. Because I'm always well, saying job. 300 calorie deficit per day is 3,500 calories a pound. So that's seven days, 2,100. That's not a pound. It, I, was, I was losing more than a pound. I mean, it's not that mathematically precise. It, it really has to do with how much activity you have. I was actually biking a lot when I was losing. Although I didn't have to, it made me feel really good. And so on top of that calorie deficit, I was also doing things. Because I was really interested in losing the weight. And, and I lost it pretty quickly. It must be I lost it really quickly. Portable digital food scale. I carry this around quite a bit. This was a gift, and this was an important gift that my wife gave me. This is a small digital food scale that does uh, both grams and um, ounces. And I was able to measure basically everything when I went out to a restaurant. I knew that I was eating whatever, uh, three ounces of pasta. And so I was very precise about what I was recording for a very long time. It was only after I lost weight and a couple months had passed by that I was comfortable enough to not weigh everything I was eating. I was very, very um, dedicated in that way. And also in this package, I had a calculator, right? So that if I knew, according to that yellow book, that one ounce in the yellow book was equal to 100 calories, if I had eaten three ounces, 3.6 ounces, I knew exactly how many calories I was eating. You don't have to be that precise, but it helped me a lot. It gave me something to focus on. Stationary food scale, like the big one over there, uh, it helps when you're, if you are cooking your own food, you know, you're getting a real record of what it is that you're eating. Uh, measuring cups and measuring spoons, I mean, if you look at, What is that? That's a cup. What's that? Two thirds. And what's this? That cup. These are all one cup measures. This is why we use measuring cups because we can't tell by looking. We can't tell by cupping. We can't tell. You know what I mean? 
If you eat a cup versus a half a cup of something, it means double the calories, okay? So if we're talking about chili, we're talking about 220 calories in one of these. So if I have two of these, it's 400 calories. That makes a big difference at the end of the day. So get good measures and use them, at least while you're losing. And know that it can be, it can be deceiving. If you're, if you're in a restaurant, again, Somebody hands you something, and you know it's in a bowl like this. You don't know how much that bowl is unless you're really familiar with those measures. Um, this is to talk about cooking. If you don't know how to cook, you should learn. If you're really interested in losing weight, because it's a lot easier to maintain your weight and lose weight when you are in control of everything that's going into your Body, right? You know all the calories that are in. When you write down a recipe and you say it uses a cup of flour and it uses, you know, a cup of peppers and it uses whatever, you know exactly what's going in it. You are not going to Bertucci's and being surprised with how many calories are going to end up on your plate. You have a precise control over what's going into your body. If you don't know how to cook, learn how to cook. Go to wikihow.com or youtube.com or simply recipes, food network. These all have videos, they all have recipes, they all have great resources for learning how to eat, or uh, how to cook. This is my history. This was in, um, I started April, actually, I'm coming up on my anniversary, I think it was April 16th. Tax day? Um, not tax day, but April 16th. So, what was it calorycount.com I'm sorry? It was the bottom right. This is the site where I recorded most of my calories. In other words, before I did the thing on paper, which is just easier for me now, I went to CalorieCount.com. CalorieCount.com was a great resource because it did, the, it did what this book does. It allows you to look up a food and say, I ate two cups of this, and it automatically turns that into calories and records it. And it also allows you to record your weight. It, it basically does everything this book does, everything that that book does. This book here? This is uh, Corinne T. Netzer. This is just a calorie count book. A calorie count book. Yeah. So, this is just easier for me now to do this by paper. But at the time, I used technology quite a bit. Right, so I'm just going to take a second and go to. Uh, YouTube. So, this is my page on YouTube. And I want to bring up this. Yeah. So when I, when I reached my goal, I shaved off my beard. And I recorded it and put it up on YouTube. This, over 8,000 people have viewed this. I've gotten a lot of great responses from people. Uh, you know, people saying I look like various people. People telling me I look a lot better without the beard. People telling me, you know, all this, all this kind of fun, nice stuff. And We'll just get to it because I have a couple friends here who know exactly what I look like and probably have never seen me without the beard. That's what I look like without the beard. <laughs> so it's just fun. But the other thing that I want to sort of talk about this about is that um, there's a community out there who can help you. You know, it's like quitting smoking or, or really doing anything. You help yourself by getting yourself out there and sort of talking about what you're doing, making it a public, of public record. I want to bring this up because wow. I, I don't know whether you glossed over it because it wasn't important or you know, you're going to come to it, but this calorie dash count 
yeah. dot com appeared to be you know, a very big issue. It was a big issue. I'm, I am going to show it to you. I'm actually trying to uh, show you this, though. So right here, this is the announcement that I was talking about today. And in a second, so I'm going to really slow it up. The presentation we're actually viewing right now will show up right here. There it is. So you can just navigate through. All these links work. OK. I'm going to fix that. Here it is right here. So there are many sites that do what calorie count does. The daily plate is actually much better, but it wasn't available when I was using calorie count. It was hyphenated calorie count before. It's not hyphenated. Which is it? It's actually with a dash. So let me bring that up. Right. So, for example, um, what food do you want to know the calories for? I'm sorry. I just think it's so cool. What is cheese? Horseradish. Horseradish. Do you want it prepared? Horseradish tree. Do you want Wegman's horseradish cream? Do you want horseradish mustard? Do you want? You know what I mean? <coughs> So this is an amazing resource, and much more detailed than that yellow book. No, Where is it? This is calorie-count.com. Dash count. Just keep track of the other. It's right up here. There, like Burger King and Absolutely. If we if we do a search, for example. Yeah. Here's McDonald's. Here's everything they have, with grades. I mean, McDonald's actually has a fantastic resource on their site for calories. I'm sorry? Those are, those are according to calorie count, uh, what, what the grades are relatively for the foods. So if you wanted to uh, pick a good food at, at McDonald's, this would be a better choice than this. Okay. Right? So Plus, idea. if you go in there, it actually does a nutrition facts thing, does a breakdown of, of weight. Of uh, you know, fiber. yeah, fiber, three grams. That's just something like uh, you know the, the, uh, the Japanese food. You know, what do you call those things? Oh, you're talking about the the soybeans? No, the rice with the thing around it, the so seaweed and the sushi. Sushi, sushi, Okay, do it. Here's sushi. Here's a shrimp tempura roll. Six pieces for 220 calories. Not bad at all. Six pieces, that's a good pass. That's a California roll, a better. You want California roll? We can do California roll. California roll is going to be probably high, higher. So, 130 for four pieces. Yeah, so 260 for two. That's not bad. At any rate, you, you certainly can go and check that out on your own time. Uh, but I also want you, you to be aware that there are lots of things that do this. I actually like the Daily Plate a lot more. But like I said, it wasn't available to me at the time. The, the benefit to this, you can still look up McDonald's, you know. And... It tells you all the information, like a snack wrap, you know, whatever. And you click on I ate this, and it adds it to your, to your, uh, your daily plate. The, the benefit to this, though, is that this is a lot more web 2 sort of savvy. Like, for example, there's an RSS feed that it gives you, if you know what RSS is. There's an RSS feed that it gives you that essentially tells you what you ate today. And you could share that with everybody else. If you, if you wanted to sort of tell everybody what you ate today, you could give them your RSS feed from, from this. OK. John, I could be wrong there frequently, but it seems to me that when you write down a lot of stuff like that, it doesn't become so onerous because you have a tendency, like most families do, to repeat the same recipe or the 
same same thing that you're doing. I try and eat a pretty wide variety of, of things because it, the, nutritionally speaking, it's a good idea, and also from the from the point of view that you you, you want to stay interested. Okay. Food. Well, as an example, if you eat chicken, yeah, you know, without skin and everything, like you more likely would eat through that quite a lot. It's a good food, good like protein, protein, low fat. Yeah. yeah, I like chicken. So, this is uh, sort of the, the thing that we're talking about from a social standpoint. We have this, and then we have this. You know, it, believe it or not, that actually exists. And here is a situation where so you walk up to a menu, and all of the calories are sitting right there as you're ordering. I actually saw this in Quaker Bridge Mall. Um, uh, right when you walk up to the Chick-fil-A, they actually have the calories like right there on the wall now. So I thought that was kind of cool. Defending your right to know. What's the better choice between McDonald's and Cheeburger, Cheeburger? Cheeburger, Cheeburger is a, is a hamburger chain. Uh, if you live in the Lawrenceville area, you probably know it. The better choice is McDonald's because Cheeburger, Cheeburger doesn't tell you what their calories are. You have no idea what you're eating. Piaf Chang's versus Passage to India. Piaf Chang's makes their nutritional information available. Passage to India does not. They're both delicious places to go. Uh, Subway versus uh, local deli, like Basio. Does everybody know Basio here? Subway tells you down to the calorie exactly what you're eating. <coughs> but you can go to any of these sites and find out more information. So as I, as I said, exercise was, was part of my weight loss, but it was not an important part of my weight loss other than just feeling good. If you think that you have to exercise in order to lose weight, you're, you're wrong. You really are. I mean, it helps, but it, it is not, it's not an effective way. If you, if you want to walk, for example, you'll be walking for three miles before you burn basically 150 calories. And so remember that pile of pretzels? You know, you eat those pretzels, you're not going to burn those off with three miles of walking. It becomes a lot harder to sort of justify all that exercise if your only point in exercising is to lose weight. If you're exercising to feel good, go for it. Exercising will give you that, that runner's high or that, that exercise high that people talk about actually exists. It's very similar to THC from what I hear. But, um, <laughs> So some of the alternatives, often a low self-image of worth. I know my, myself, I, I have seen a wide range of difference between the way people react to me now and the way people reacted to me before. Mm -hmm. People think that you're dirty or you know something, there's, there's some social stigma about being obese that nobody would believe. I mean, people walk the other way when they see you coming, they're, they're uncomfortable around you, it's like, Night and day. And um, it really opened my eyes about the way that people sort of react to some of the obesity. Um, and of course, obesity has its health risks like diabetes, uh, heart disease, sleep apnea. I actually had sleep apnea until I lost the weight. I understand that it's not causal, uh, there's not a causal relationship between obesity and sleep apnea, but it's more, it's more likely, apparently. Um, I know my, myself, as soon as I lost that weight, I was able to breathe at night. Sleep apnea is where you stop breathing in the middle of the night. I, I didn't even know what was happening. I would wake up the next day and I would be just as tired as when I had gone to sleep because I, I stopped breathing several times during the night. Yeah. I ended up having to wear a compressed air mask overnight. I don't have to wear it anymore. And the reason is because I lost it. Thank you all so much for your time today. So, um, we are really at the hour mark, but if anybody has any questions, I'd love to entertain them. Yes? Um, you didn't look too much at your breakdown of calories. Yeah. Were you, did you take a multivitamin? Did you do anything to make sure that? I did, I did take a multivitamin. Um, that's an interesting point. I, I, but another thing is, because of that, I was not concerned so much about nutrition because I knew I was getting the nutrients that I needed in that moment. I 
I was drinking a lot of water, but I was so dedicated to just counting calories that the rest of it was very secondary for me. It wasn't until I had lost that I really started to pay strong attention to the nutrition. And now I'm very, I'm a very strong advocate of good nutrition. It would have been hard for me to do both at the time. It would have been hard for me to, to be really concerned about um, eating a certain kind of lettuce because there were more nutrients in it as opposed to just eating whatever lettuce was available or you know, whatever the case might be. Um, as far as my breakdown in calories, I, I really, even now, I eat what I want, basically. If I want a cupcake, I'll have a cupcake. I'll just make sure that I count it. And I'm not too concerned about whether it has whole grains in it or not. You know? But I do, when I have the opportunity, when I have a choice, I'll definitely go for the more nutritious choice because I know it'll make me feel better. Yes, is the first time you lost weight? No. I've done it twice. I've, I've lost, this is the first time I considered it a life change. I just got something interesting. The first time I lost weight, I did what you did. And I got the scale and measured very carefully. It was hard work. Oh, yeah. 